what she's done is she's put together easy solutions and techniques and skills that teachers can use in their classroom to help with anxiety, depression, uh, hopelessness. And that's what students tell us. They say the reason why they're struggling is they don't feel there's hope. Um, mm -hmm. I'll give you a great story. In 2019, I was driving my grandson who was in the back seat of my car and he's in the rearview mirror. And this is right when COVID hit and everything was going on, all the confusion. And he looked into the mirror at me. He said, Granddaddy, it's hard for me. He said, am I going to die? Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome, friends. With the increase of social pressures and the challenges facing America's youth, we really must be concerned over the ever-increasing availability of drugs and alcohol among children and its effect on their futures. I know firsthand what the grip of addiction looks like, and so I'm so encouraged by programs that intercept and prepare kids for the choice to abstain, discovering activities that will mold and shape their character and their skill sets for a fulfilling life. Well, Roman Gabriel III has spent his life in pursuit of educating, encouraging, and challenging the next generation of leaders, students, through the roles of pro football player, college coach, broadcaster, and motivational speaker, reaching a large audience with the Roman Gabriel Show on multimedia platforms, passionately using role model mirroring, telling the life-changing stories of high-impact sports, entertainment, education, and military leaders. He is the president of Sold Out Youth Foundation. A former pro football quarterback, Roman III, is the son of former LA Rams quarterback, Roman Gabriel. And he is a friend to both my husband and I. So, Roman, I want to welcome you, my friend. Thank you for being with us on the show today. Brenda, it's great to be with you guys always. And uh, today's uh, we're having a little fun here. I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona today. So I love the Camelback Mountain in the background. So we're good. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, you, you are on the road a lot, my friend. Uh, tell us about some of the different organizations you work with and some of what you're doing right now. Well, we're, you said it in the opening, Brenda, that um, right now uh, we're in an epidemic in our country. 35% uh, of uh, junior high and high school students uh, are experiencing some sort of mental or emotional distress. Uh, one out of four is thinking about suicide and a 25% increase in high school students that are committing suicide. Uh, fentanyl is a major proportions in our country coming over the southern border. Uh, right now, 80,000 have died this year, um, 250 teenagers a day, uh, and that number co continues to climb. Uh, we're, we're in an epidemic with drugs and alcohol and from post-COVID with emotional and mental wellness problems for our students that still haven't adjusted to taking those masks off and coming back to school. So I've been very busy when normally uh, we're in radio silence this time of year with schools. I'm speaking to schools all over the country who are struggling. They're tr tr trying to figure out a way of what they need to do. And they realize that they don't have the tools to do it where they're at. So they're looking for outside help. So uh, we're kind of a COVID success story. Um, I hate to say that, uh, but right now our program is just blown up because there's so many organizations that are looking for help in our program. It's a 100% online program that deals with mental and emotional wellness, drug and alcohol abstinence, goal setting, uh, and really provides curriculum with solutions for private and public schools. So there's a lot going on. Wow. Well, you know, when you read those or mentioned those statistics, um, that's heart wrenching, gut wrenching. Uh, I mean, I have personal experience with having lost loved ones in my family, as well as personal friends to a uh, drug overdose. One of those being fentanyl. And so I'm probably more recently aware of how dangerous that drug is and how prevalent it is. And I don't think people, you know, your norm, normal average uh, person, just we're going about our daily lives, we're all busy, we're not thinking about the epidemic of drugs and how it affects our children, how our children are really prey to, um, you know, these folks that, that, that are looking for 
uh, their predators. So um, tell us a little bit about how your program intercepts, because I really feel like what you're doing is you're making children aware at an early age, which is an, a preventative, right? Well, it starts at an early age. All the CDC numbers point to middle school students. We start with sixth graders who are our target audience. 28% um, uh, or so of middle school students are going to try alcohol for the first time. That number jumps to about 50% as freshmen in high school. So if they don't start out with an abstinence long-term answer uh, and they get into that partying uh, lifestyle as in high school, it's just going to continue. And then it moves on to college where it ratchets it up to another level. And once you get into the addiction lifestyle, um, it doesn't go away. I mean, 50% of people who do recover from drug or alcohol are going to be back in a rehab facility. Uh, so it's a lifetime struggle after that. There, there is no choices after that. Uh, so what yeah. we're trying to do is a, it's a long-term abstinence program where we're right now in our third generation of students and have proven in the communities and the school districts that we've served uh, that it makes a huge difference uh, right now, if they start early, because when they do start early, they overcome that peer pressure through our pro program. It's a three-step accountable pledge where kids, uh, you know, not only uh, pledge to be drug and alcohol abstinent, but they pledge to hold their good friends accountable and to have a discussion with their parents. So we have yeah. QR code posters that go up in the high traffic areas of schools. Uh, they're able to access those QR code posters, which takes them directly to our website at soldouttv.com. There are a box for responses. We get thousands of responses from students talking about the problems they deal with at home, talking about uh, maybe a parent that's an alcoholic or a drug addict or a sister or brother who's vaping. Um, we found out during total distance learning in 2019 that students were telling us they were struggling with depression and anxiety uh, and being at home was, was not a positive thing for them at all. And the schools could not uh, gauge who was on and who was actually learning and how long they were on. So it was a mess. Uh, they were struggling from the start. But where we're all right now is schools have gone back thinking that when they took the masks off, the, the kids would go back to normal. And it's just not happened. Hmm. Yeah, the mental health issues are definitely on the rise. And uh, it is a problem and one that we really have to pay attention to. Um, you know, especially for our, our next generations that are, uh, they're just so vulnerable. And, you know, oftentimes uh, children don't have the best support at home. Um, they're being abused. They might, ha you know, be traumatized. And I, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you, but I actually work with treatment centers. And so many times what I have discovered with people going through treatment, people struggling with addiction, is that they had trauma in their background. They're, there's something that they're, you know, trying to anesthetize. And so ha are you able to provide um, the kind of encouragements that would help these kids to equip them, uh, you know, for strength and for wisdom when they're not being given that at home? Well, we can tell your viewers right now that they can get answers at soldouttv.com. Um, all they have to do is click on the health and wellness page. Um, we brought in professional psychologists, uh, neurologists, nutritionalists, sleep deprivation doctors, uh, uh, mental success coaches. These are people who are working with teenagers. These are people who are working with professional athletes on the highest level. So uh, we basically have provided solutions um, so we have created for this fall to answer the call of schools, um, a mental and emotional wellness curriculum that has eight modules. Um, they're cut down into um, teaching lessons where you have curriculum, discussion, skills orientation, testing, um, and we do the guide for the teachers. So uh, we're in a position with our professionals where they're actually taking solutions that are working right now for students. Uh, and able to help them. So we're going to make this program available online to public and private schools that they can integrate into their health programs. And what's cool about it is, is um, our program is made for the phone for students. So it's visual. Um, all of our stuff comes with co complimentary videos from high profile people speaking into these life skills, speaking into mental and emotional wellness. 
speaking into mental success and drug and alcohol absence and how those things work. We also have a portal that we'll make available uh, in September to parents to help them to look for the signs of mental and emotional unwellness uh, and for drug and alcohol and how to have that discussion and some of the drugs that are out there and how, how they're approaching their children. Um, so uh, I'll just tell you what our psychologist, her name is Dr. Erin Shannon. She works um, with um, adolescents and she works with professional athletes across the spectrum. And she told me, she said, Roman, the problem that we have right now is kids' brains are not calm. Um, their brains are not in a position where they're ready to learn. They're distressed. So you can have the best teachers, you can have the best environment, but until those brains are calm and until they're in a point where they're able to learn, we're really not going to make progress. So what she's done is she's put together easy solutions and techniques and skills that teachers can use in their classroom to help with anxiety, depression, uh, hopelessness. And that's what students tell us. They say the reason why they're struggling is they don't feel there's hope. Um, mm -hmm. I'll give you a great story. In 2019, I was driving my grandson who was in the back seat of my car and he's in the rearview mirror. And this is right when COVID hit and everything was going on, all the confusion. And he looked into the mirror at me and said, Granddaddy, it's hard for me. He said, Am I going to die? Oh. And uh, I looked back. He's, uh, he's eight years old. And I was thinking to myself, um, when I was his age and when I was growing up in junior and high school, I, I was, we never thought about death. We never thought anything could happen to us. And here we have six to eight year old kids that are seeing people die, that are seeing their parents get sick, that are seeing their parents lose jobs, that are home 24 hours a day during that period. And how we can think that that type of response and what they dealt with during social distancing does not have an impact on you, uh, a, a dire impact. Um, and, and, and I, I want to speak to the churches right now, Brenda. Uh, the church has got to wake up. Yeah. Um, if we don't start talking about reality and start making mm -hmm. ourselves relevant and start leading the way, um, we have, we have 2,000 churches a month that are, that are closing their doors in America right now. During COVID, we gave away our, our, our religious freedom because of what was told to us through this. And, and I believe that God is calling the Christian church to stand up as parents and to be vigilant, to stand up and to educate the public. And it's, and it's time that we questioned our schools about the things that are being taught to our students. And that's one positive that came out of COVID is that my daughter, for example, said, no, what I'm seeing coming through, that's not going to be taught to my child. I had no idea. Um, and so a, a lot has been learned about our system. And uh, I'm very excited to announce a partnership uh, with a group called Infosage uh, out of uh, Arizona. That's a curriculum creator that has a um, co coalition and partnership with a, a, a one of the oldest liberal arts Christian schools in our country in Mississippi called Bellhaven University. And they create curriculum for Bellhaven University. And so when I met uh, Infosage and Ray Powers, my partner now, um, he looked at my program, said, Roman, you got one of the most unique programs. The schools definitely need this. But what we need to do for you is we need to create curriculum and accredit your visual curriculum so that um, so that it can be accredited for school credit for college. And so um, he is creating curriculum that is accredited, college accredited. It's going along with our online program that's visual. And I want to invite all of your uh, listeners and viewers to go to soldouttv.com and check out our program. It can help your kids right now. It can help you right now. Um, so church, pastors, youth pastors, if we're, we in church have to start talking about this. Um, yeah. We're past the point where, where it's, you know, where it was back in the uh, late 80s and 90s where you didn't talk about mental illness and it was taboo. Right. Um, we have to have this discussion with our church. We have to have this discussion with our parents. You know, uh, I really think that it's time for the church to stand up and God bless uh, our, our God, because in the last month, he has bailed us out with the Supreme Court. He saved millions of children's lives that we never thought in our lifetime we would see where our, or we have a chance where our country isn't going to be cursed, where God can't take his hand off it because we're killing children every day. Um, gun control. 
uh, where we have freedom to protect ourselves in a world right now where our government doesn't want to protect us. Um, uh, we have had some things in prayer with that coach, what courage he had uh, in, the, in the, the Supreme Court ruled in our advantage for the freedom to kneel at the 50 yard line and pray. The mental and emotional wellness of our children should be number one. It's not with our federal government. The schools aren't equipped to do it because of their heavy dose of uh, testing curriculum that doesn't that cut programs uh, like uh, life skills, like drug and alcohol abstinence, like goal setting, all in the name of teaching our kids how to take tests. Um, we have to, this system has to be changed. So we're doing something about it. I just joined. Uh, we're going to be announcing here in the next uh, month or so an alliance with a private school here in Arizona uh, where we we are going to develop the curriculum where it's going to be health and wellness, total approach to the student, where there'll be no more indoctrination. We'll teach civics. We'll teach loving our country. We'll give them an opportunity to explore their faith through organizations like the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. It's time to go back 30 years, church. It's time to go back and take back our educational system and start teaching our kids about how to be a good person about how uh, that it's not all about testing, that it's about our kids becoming successful and teaching them the skills that give them every opportunity to reach their dreams and goals. And that's what our program's about. It's sold out. We're about old school and a new school delivery system, um, which is the way the kids like it on their telephones. Mm, amazing. And you pointed to something that I think is uh, something we, we have to look at. And that is the issue of mental health, you know, within the church. And uh, for so many years, that was kind of a, a, sub, a taboo subject. You know, psychology was demonized. And uh, really, we've, we've lost our way from the model of the early church, which really had a heavy emphasis on soul care. And so I think that in the, the, there is a tremendous opportunity, as you said, for the church to be supportive and to bring this information um, can can churches integrate with you and bring bring your program to say their youth departments? And I, and I want to clear something up. I'm not jumping on the parents here because there's so many Christian parents out there that are doing everything right. They're just confused mm -hmm. about how they can help and what they need to do. Right. I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to the leaders of the church. I'm talking to youth pastors. Um, we are putting together a faith based program right now, where that mental and emotional module is paired with scripture where you know we all know that hope doesn't come without an object and that's jesus christ so the thing that i wanted to tell youth pastors out there if you want to contact us go to sold.tv.com our contact information is on there we will have a faith-based program up and running for sometime in the fall this year where we will be able to take care of the mental and emotional peace but tie in the biblical scriptures that will help you to encourage your kids and parents with what's most important, which is mental health starts with a relationship with God. Um, but we also have to understand that uh, genetic mental illness uh, that's passed down in a family, chemical imbalances that are physical, chemical, not yeah. relational, they interrupt your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So what happens is it doesn't matter how strong a Christian you are. If you have a chemical imbalance or you have a mental condition that's genetic, where you need a psychiatrist to, you know, and medical help in terms of medicine, um, your spiritual life is going to be impacted. And that's very frustrating for people because they're like, God doesn't feel close. It's because you're struggling uh, with things that are impeding your ability to cope. They're impeding your ability to be mentally and emotional well. So, you know, see your doctor. Um, you know, there are some psychiatrists and, and mental health professionals that do it um, without drugs, and there are some where you have to have drugs. So a lot of this is education that we need to be doing in the church. And youth pastors, we can give you the curriculum that can you can start working with your grade school and middle school and, and uh, high school students. Mm -hmm. Well, and another uh, area that's affecting our kids' mental health is the uh, issue of uh, violence in schools and, and shootings. Um, you know, some of these shootings that have taken place in school are affecting all of our children and that's trauma and uh, we may not realize so much uh, looking from the outside how they're internalizing this stuff and just like your little eight-year-old grandson asking you when COVID became a big issue you know 
grandpa, am I going to die? Well, now kids are asking, you know, am I safe going to school? And so there's a, a this is heavy. And um, these, the, the point is that these are the kinds of things, these are the kinds of traumas and the, that foster mental health issues. And then that also makes these children more vulnerable to uh, the predators that want to offer them drugs and alcohol and, the, and a life of addiction to escape some of the things that they may not, you know, years down the road, even be able to really uncover for themselves. And it takes a lot of hard work to go back and try to dig up and uncover where's my pain coming from. So I, I'm, I'm just grateful for programs like yours, Roman. Is this, uh, how do you get your, um, your financial funding? Where does that come from? And uh, who can be of support? Well, we, you, our program for public and private schools, we work with their budgets, depending upon what their budgets are. Churches, we work with their budgets as well. As you know, I'm an evangelist. So, um, you know, for me, um, what I do always comes back to biblical principles and comes back to, I'm so thankful for organizations like FCA and Youth for Christ that still have an ability to go on campus and offer the spiritual peace to students. Um, but if you want to help us, you can give personally to us um, um, as a 501c3 nonprofit. It's tax deductible. You can go to soldouttv at gmail.com and email us, or you can go on our website at soldouttv.com. Uh, and give uh, at the donate button easily and simply on PayPal or credit cards. Um, or you can text us to sold out 20 at 484848 and text us a, a gift as well. So we rely on uh, grants. We rely on individuals, on grassroots funding. Uh, but with this new program, we'll be introducing an app uh, that will mirror our website at soldouttv.com that we're going to make available in February 2023. And good news for you parents, um, it'll be very affordable, just like any other app on Apple or Droid. Um, so um, you'll be able to take our program yourself personally uh, and be able to uh, access our full program. So what you'll love about our program is, is that it's visual. Um, we use role model mirroring through high profile people in the entertainment and sports business that students look up to uh, and that will speak into these life skills, into these valuable success principles, um, and to get your kids passionate about what they want to do in their life. Because once they turn that passion switch on, um, the drug and alcohol piece goes away is what we're finding. Um, drugs and alcohol right. for people that don't have hope, or for people who don't have an outlet, or for people that, that have reached rock bottom. We're also um, putting together uh, a crisis line for our pledge page this year where if kids are feeling like they want to commit suicide or they feel out of control or they feel like um, they can't get off of drugs or alcohol and they need help and they don't feel like they can tell their parent or don't feel like they can tell a yeah. teacher or coach where they'll be able to dial an 800 num number privately and get help. We have to mm. um, prevent yeah. kids getting to the red zone. Right. Um, and that's what's happening right now is kids are getting to the red zone. And then when you get to the red zone, it's, it's anybody's ball game. Um, and sitting out parents, you have to know what your kids are doing on this. You have to yeah. pay attention to this and use the safeguards and know Good. where things are coming from and who they're talking to. Um, and the reason for that is the fentanyl situation, and kids aren't just saying, hey, I want to take fentanyl and die. What they're doing is they're getting contacted on TikTok. They're getting contacted on Instagram. They're getting contacted on Twitter from people selling vape materials, marijuana hemp, um, uh, other prescription drugs. Um, and what happens is when they're not getting those from a pharmacy, they're getting laced with fentanyl. Yeah. So when the kids think they're experimenting and I'm going to just try it, they die. Right. One pill yeah. kills. Tragic. So, so you have, we have to educate our kids at home and our kids in our church and our kids in schools that experimentation is not an option anymore. Not if, you, not if you're serious with 100% want to keep your life. Yes, amen to that. Uh, this is critical. 
and uh, I hope our viewers are really listening. And I know we've got a little background noise there. You're a very busy guy, and we've caught you on the road. And here, I'm at a restaurant <laughs> at the Sinesta Inn here in Gator yeah. Ranch in Scottsdale. So, oh, uh, awesome! It, it's, it, 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 uh, I, I yeah. was supposed to be with you from my studio. Yes. And, and um, um, we actually had a school that called us here in, in, in Arizona that wanted to meet with us right away. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I have a awesome. passion for this, as you can see. Yes. Uh, we feel like we can change this dynamic. We feel like this yeah. is, is something that can be solved. Um, ladies Amen. and gentlemen, if you're looking for your president or Congress or the government to solve this, this problem, mm. they're not even interested in talking about it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's up it's to not the church. It's going to happen. That's the right. The church has got to lead the way. The church yeah. has got to be vigilant to ask mm. our schools to lead the way. I know firsthand of people that have fallen victim to it. And that's why it's also my heart to get the word out and uh, so much appreciate what you do in Roman. Um, tell us about your show. Uh, you, you have some incredible guests. Tell, uh, mention some of those guests and how exciting it is and you know, some, maybe some of the stories that are encouraging these kids. I've been in the media covering sports and entertainment since 1994, actually 1988. Um, I learned a long time ago that I, I did a five day a week, three day a week show, 800 number, all sports, call in, all go. Um, that, that's, that's being covered. I got tired of that 20 years ago. And I said, you know, I'm interested in telling the stories of high impact faith based athletes who are making a difference in kids' lives, who are using their platform for positive, um, and who can um, go to people who would never go to church and talk to them about what a relationship with Jesus looks like and how it can change your life. Mm -hmm and how it's relevant today. Um, yeah. So the Roman Gabriel show is streaming um, on, all you have to do is go, you know, we're on Tropeshans television, we're on Comfy TV, we're on iPod television, uh, you know, podcasts, we're on all the outlets. Uh, you can go to romangabrielshow.com to find out where we're broadcasting. Um, but it's, it's conversations, like real people like you. Um, it, it's where we're teaching that these athletes are just like you. They're struggling with your problems. Yeah, they may be more high profile, but they are people who want to speak into your life, um, who when they tell their story, you're able to say, hey, I know what they're going through. I've been there, done mm. that. Mm. Um, so our show uh, uses the platform to talk about our commitment to the next generation of youth and how you can get involved with the Sold Out Youth Foundation. That's our life now. That's our passion. That's why we do what we do. We want to give you great content. We want to give you great broadcasting of the Roman Gabriel show brand uh, on all outlets on radio, television, streaming, podcast. But we also uh, want to tell you the story about how you can help your own kids. Um, and for me, that's helping millions of kids across our country. I've got two kids that don't drink. I've got six kids that I know aren't going to either. We broke that generational curse because both my wife and I had alcoholism in our family um, that we broke that when we broke the mold of getting ready mm. to have 29 years married July 24th. So um, mm. we just want to tell you guys that um, don't listen to the news. You're only going to get negative there. We can get solutions. We can take care of solutions. Go to soldouttv.com for your kids. Utilize our program. Check us out at RomanGabrielShow.com. We'll be putting on a youth initiative at Super Bowl 57 here in Phoenix. Go to soldouttv.com backslash events. And if you're a corporate you want to be involved and help us help the next generation and be involved with the Super Bowl with us this year, do it. Uh, come on out yeah. and join us. But uh, Brenda, it's so great being with you. And we want to help kids. You got hope. We can do this yes. together. Yes. Amen. We love you, friend. Thank you so much for fighting the good fight, for being there for these kids. I know you're making a difference and we're going to see it in the unfolding of the future generations because even though we might be up against a giant, we serve a God who is bigger. And I believe he's equipped you for this hour. So thank you for being with me. Appreciate you. Brenda, any school, any school district that wants us, contact yeah. us at soldouttv.com. Okay. And we're going to place that information on the lower third of the screen as well. And uh, you know what? Let's do this again sometime, Roman. You're a great guy. Okay. Great to be with you. Love you, you and Paul both. God bless you both. We'll yes. see you talking soon.
Amen. And to you, friends, thank you for taking the time to listen to the statistics, to listen to the need. And now I'm going to ask you to respond to the need. We need you to be supportive of programs like Sold Out Youth. And uh, I want you to go to Roman Gabriel's websites and check it out for yourselves and see how you can make a difference for the children in our world. Maybe you have children, maybe you know people with children, but you know what? It's our job to protect them and to equip them for what's to come and the realities of this world. I appreciate you and I value you. Thanks. Thank you for being with me today. And I invite you again to be with us next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.